This is Knowledge Engineering with Semantic Web Technologies, lecture number five, Ontological Engineering. This now is the last extra part of the fifth lecture. And in this part of the lecture, I want to show you an example of the application of one of the ontology evaluation methodologies that we have learned. So we will talk about OntoClean and we'll apply it to a specific example. Okay. So here is our example. You might remember um, OntoClean was usually applied on taxonomic structure. So here we have some kind of a hierarchy, so a taxonomy. And of course we have chosen these examples from a variety of basic taxonomies that exist here. So for example, as an upper concept, we have one concept that we called entity and all the other concepts are subconcepts of it. So we have to say properties here because OntoClean requires its own terminology. Then we said, okay, a location is subordered to an entity and country is a specific kind of location here, for example. While country, as you see here, also is uh, a subconcept of legal agent and uh, social entity. And then we have here amount of matter, which splits here in physical object, living being and foot. And we have something what we called red, things that are red. Then we have agents and we have groups. And then let's continue here with physical objects. We have fruit and animal, for example. And fruit, we have apple and more special, we have a red apple. So for foot, also we have apple and for foot, we have interestingly here caterpillar. And um, caterpillar also, uh, likewise is also an animal like uh, the butterfly or the group of vertebrates. And uh, one special vertebrate is a person, for example, which on the other hand also is a legal agent, which is an agent. Then we have social entities, which are some special kind of agents, and which are also some special kind of group of people, which are a specialized kind of group. And then we have organizations, which are likewise subordered to social entities and legal agents. So you see, this is a quite complex taxonomy. Now the question is, is this ontology somehow correct? Does it really fit to the real world like we have it in mind, like we intend it? So therefore we have to validate that. And now we apply what we have learned in OntoClean. So first thing, what we have to do according to the OntoClean methodology is what? Yeah, it's um, the annotation with um, the so-called meta properties. You remember meta properties, we had, for example, rigidity, we had identity, unity, and we had dependency. So these four things, and we have to annotate each single property, which are here classes in our taxonomy, with these so-called meta properties. And then we will continue with the rules. So, okay, let's start with the first one, the entity. Okay, entity can be almost everything. So you do not have any common identity criterion. So therefore it's minus I. Unity, it's the same with unity. You do not have for some kind of entity a common unity criterion. So the point is all of these things are considered a whole, but of course they are somehow different. Therefore it's minus U. But in the end, it's rigid because if an entity ceases to exist, it's not an entity anymore, so it's gone. Okay, so we have minus i, minus u, and plus r. Let's continue with location. Location, okay, gets a new identity criterion for locations, for example, the geographical location somehow that will be specified here. And then you consider a unity. So is this location a whole? No, it's location is some part of a of a larger or a bigger object. So therefore it does not, it, or none of its uh, instances is considered as being a whole. So therefore it's anti-unity as a meta property. And of course the location is rigid. If it ceases to be a location, it's not anything anymore. Then we continue with the amount of matter. Also the amount of matter receives a new identity criterion because we can now somehow distinguish them. So it does not simply inherit the identity criteria from entity, it's all its matter. So it's more specific in that case. And uh, the other thing is all this amount of matter cannot be considered as being a whole because it's some amount of something. So it's never be an instance, it's in the entirety or a whole thing. But on the other hand, it's rigid. If it ceases to exist, it's gone. 
For the red, again, yeah, red things do not have a common identity criterion besides the fact they are all red, but then you cannot differentiate them. So there can be various different kinds of objects in that group, so therefore it's minus i. So no common identity criterion. And it's the same for, for unities. While all of these somehow can most times consider to be also a whole, these red objects, they do not have a common identity criterion. So therefore, um, it's minus u. And the other thing is if something ceases to be red, for example, if it's painted green, the entity still exists. So therefore, it's not rigid. So it's minus r. OK, let's have a look at the agent. An agent, an entity might be an agent, sure. And of course, agent can be very many different things. Therefore, no special or no own entity criteria. It's the same uh, with unity. So therefore, uh, also the, the problem here is agents might be considered of being some whole. But uh, on the other hand, it's different kind of agents. So, so therefore, no common criteria. And on the other hand, it's um, anti-rigid because um, yeah, if an agent ceases to be an agent, the entity might still endure, but it does not be an agent or it's not an agent necessarily anymore. So therefore, it's anti-rigid. Let's have a look at the group. Groups can also be considered all have similar, yeah, so, so, so some kind of identity criterion that you can use here, a common identity criterion if you identify groups as being somehow um, having common, common something in common. And um, you can identify them. And on the other hand, um, groups, of course, are not necessarily always considered as one whole. So it's a group of people, for example, can be several numbers of people in the group. So therefore, this has anti unity criterion. But if the group ceases to exist, the group is gone. So therefore, it's rigid. Please keep in mind all of these properties that we are just talking about and that I suggest to you, of course, they are subjective. You can, of course, also interpret these groups in another way. And therefore, you can also then, if your interpretation is really what you have in mind, you can devise other kind of meta properties. But nevertheless, in the end, your taxonomy should stay consistent. And therefore, is then we have to have a look at these rules. OK, let's continue. A physical object, of course, phys physical objects, for example, might have names or something like that. So they have a new identity criterion. Then usually they are considered a whole, therefore plus u. And also, if they cease to exist, they are gone. So quite simple. It's the same with living beings. So we can really adopt the argumentation here and simply use the identical annotation. Then for foot, OK, foot usually, yeah, yeah different kind of foots, of course. Uh, it, uh, it inherits simply the identity criterion from above from, from the amount of matter. So you can say, let's say, 100 grams of zucchini or something like that. So then you have an amount of foot, which is also foot in that sense. Um, the point is, yeah, it's uh, in the same way like an amount of matter, not necessarily, or it's not considered a whole. So for example, 100, 100 grams of zucchini, not, of course, it's not a whole zucchini, not necessarily. And it's the same uh, concerning rigidity. If you consider foot not anymore as foot, for example, if it rots, then it's still a physical object, but uh, so the entity stays, but it's not considered foot anymore. So therefore, it's anti-rigid. The animal, yeah, like the living being, so you introduce new names for exactly the species you are talking here about, about the animals. And uh, all animals are considered a whole. And also, if they cease to exist, they are no animals anymore. So um, this is then rigid. The legal agent, so the legal agent is some subclass of agents. So for the legal agent, you will have new identity criteria. On the other hand, some of them might be considered a whole. Others might not be considered a whole. So if you consider some groups or stuff like that, so therefore, it's minus u. And of course, like the agent, uh, if the legal agent is no agent anymore, then probably the entity is still uh, uh, continues while, um, I mean, the task of being a legal entity or the role of being an entity ceases to exist. So therefore, it's anti-rigid. 
Okay, so where was the next one? Just a second. Yeah, it was group of people. So like um, the group of several things, also the group of people then inherit a new identity criterion, plus O. Um, so they have a, a special own identity criterion, therefore plus O. And like for the groups, um, uh, yeah, groups also never are considered as being itself a whole in that sense, but it's rigid. Okay, then we have a social entity and the social entity stays a social entity. You have new identity criterion for the social entity. It's considered as a whole, so a entity, and uh, it's rigid. If it ceases to exist, it's gone. Next thing then is the organization. It inherits also everything and also organizations have a new identity criterion so to differentiate and to identify organizations. So therefore they also create a new identity criterion. It's plus O and also the rest uh, plus U and plus R. The fruits as being a subclass of physical objects. So fruits also can be identified via their names, for example, then they are all units. And of course, if the fruit um, ceases, then the fruit is gone. So therefore it's rigid. The same holds exactly the same for the apple. Also here you have new identity criteria for different kind of apples and the same holds like for the fruit. And then you have the red apple. The red apple usually, yeah, you can have different kind of red apples, but um, they inherit their name, for example, from uh, the, the upper class, from the, from the super class. So therefore it's only a plus i. Apples also, if they are red, are considered a whole, therefore plus u. But of course the apple, if it rots, for example, it's still an apple, but never, not necessarily red. So therefore this is anti-rigid. Okay, next one, vertebrate as being a subclass here of animal. It inherits, for example, the identity criterion, which could be the name of the species here, uh, of the vertebrates you, you want to uh, distinguish somehow. And then of course they are a whole, so therefore plus you and also again rigid, if it ceases to exist, it's gone. And the same for person, and for the person, of course, new identity criterion, because persons have individual names and that's the reason why it's plus O and the rest should be obvious plus U and plus R. The butterfly, also interesting thing. So it inherits, of course, uh, the name of the species of the butterf butterfly from the animal. It's considered a whole, but of course, uh, the stage of B or the stadium being a butterfly, it's only a phase in uh, the, the living sequence or the living time of that animal. So Previously, it was a caterpillar that you see here. So therefore, both of them, caterpillar and also butterfly, they are non-rigid because if the caterpillar ceases to exist, it becomes a butterfly. So it's easy as that. And the last thing we have here is the country. Of course, countries then are identified by their name, so a new identity criterion. Countries are considered something a whole. So uh, it's the whole country if we are talking about the country. And um, yeah, what about rigidity? If the country ceases to exist? Yeah, this is a bit difficult. So if the social entity considered a country ceases to exist, it's gone. But nevertheless, I mean the geographic region. So the location where the country is, of course, stays on. So therefore, this is anti-rigid because it's not an essential criterion um, if we look at that. So you see, now we have labeled all of the properties in our taxonomy. So all of the classes we are considering here. Uh, again, maybe you have forgotten it. So properties and classes here in this kind of terminology for ontoclean, they are considered being the same. So don't think of owl properties, think of ontoclean properties being something like a class. So to understand that, watch again the previous lecture there I have introduced this terminology which is older than the terminology we have introduced with OWL. Okay, so how to go on after labeling? What I do first is I just consider the so-called backbone taxonomy of my huge taxonomy. What's the backbone taxonomy? The backbone sub, uh, taxonomy is built up by the rigid properties. The rigid properties for, uh, they, they don't change over time. 
for a specific entity, for a specific individuum. So therefore, rigid properties represent something like an invariant aspect of the domain I'm representing with a taxonomy. So I start with that one, I start with the backbound taxonomy. And then I start by verifying whether the constraints on the meta properties are violated or not. And every time a violation is encountered, I have to think about the design decision which has been taken. So either I have to reconsider the meta properties because I interpret the class now slightly different, or I have to reconsider the taxonomic link that I have made. Okay, so let's have a look how this might look. So this is the backbound taxonomy. So I have removed all of the classes from that taxonomy which are non-rigid or anti-rigid. So therefore this is what remains and we want to start with all these rigid classes that you see here and now we want to look whether we have some violations of these five rules that we have learned in the OntoClean methodology. And one of the, the rules was that anti-unity cannot subsume unity. And if you see here the blue marked boxes, you have here in a superclass amount of matter, which has anti-unity, and you have living being, which has a unity. Yeah, and of course this is not allowed. So it means that exactly this relation must somehow be expressed in another way. And we know already this mismatch of subsumption, this misinterpretation of subsumption. What is really going on here? Living beings usually are constituted of amounts of matter. So therefore, we have here to apply another kind of property, so another kind of relation between these two classes, and we should remove this taxonomic link. So we do this, we remove the taxonomic link and you see here we have moved the class of living being here to the top as being now a subclass of the class entity. Okay, but again for the same rule we find other candidates. So therefore also physical object here is identified as being a subclass of amount of matter. And here again in amount of matter you have anti-unity and of course you have here unity of a physical object. And here again, the relation is exactly the same. Physical objects are constituted of amounts of matter. So therefore, we have to express this link again in another relation, which is not part of the taxonomy. So no subclass relationship here. So we remove it again, the taxonomic link, and we end up with the physical object being direct subclass to the entity, as you see here. So we have removed it. And again, as you see here, we have another candidate for the application of exactly this rule. We have a um, group of people as being a superclass of social entity, where a social entity is here uh, has the unity criterion and group of people has the anti-unity criterion. So again, yeah, social entities can be constituted, constituted by groups of people, sure. So again, it's vice versa. It's exactly the same relation like for the others. Therefore, I get rid of exactly that taxonomic link and try in my ontology to rephrase that kind of knowledge, to represent it in another way, with another relation, but not with a subclass relation. Okay, so what happens here is social entity, again here, is put directly under the entity, so, and we have removed the previously existing taxonomic link. So it's a little bit cleaned up, but we have more things to consider in this taxonomy. So for example, consider the two boxes that are now here marked in green. We have physical object, which is a superclass of animal, while animal also is a subclass of living being. So you have here two different connections and you have to look now on the interpretation. We see here, of course, that um, yeah, there is no, uh, like we call it, there is, there is no um, mismatch or no violation of our usual constraints. But here is something else. We have so-called conflicting identity criteria. So the point is, if the animal ceases to exist, if the animal dies, then it remains still, at least for some time, a physical object 
while it does not remain a physical being. So therefore we have here conflicting identity criteria which should be cleaned up. So it means animals cease to exist and are still physical objects. So therefore what we have to do here, we should remove exactly this taxonomic link to keep our taxonomy valid. So we do this, so we have removed exactly that link. And now we have a so-called cleaned backbone taxonomy where are no violations of all the rules, including the identity uh, extensions that we have talked about in the last part of the lecture. So this now is the cleaned backbone, but as you know, there are more classes. And of course, now let's watch all the, or let's take a look at all the other classes which are non-rigid and how are they connected. Maybe there are again violations to be considered. Okay, so now focus on the non-rigid properties, non-rigid classes. And there you distinguish also different kind of cases that might occur. The first case is the case of the so-called phased sortals. What does that mean? So here we consider properties whose instances are allowed to change certain of their identity criteria during their existence while they remain the same entity. So you see in which direction this might go. So for example, if we look at the caterpillar and the butterfly, so this might be something like a phased sorter. The point here is they are usually independent, these properties, they are anti-rigid, so they don't cease to exist. So if they cease to exist, then the entity still remains somehow, and they supply usually some identity criteria which they might have inherited. So let's have a look in our taxonomy, and there we have caterpillar and butterfly being a subclass of animal. And exactly here we have the point that caterpillar is here anti-rigid and also butterfly is anti-rigid, and they both represent so-called phases of this animal. Okay, so the point here is there is no other property that subsumes the two phases of the same entity. So the point is somehow we must come to the same entity which then is an animal, yeah, or is some, somewhere a subclass of, an, or in a subclass of animal, but nevertheless then is for part of the time a caterpillar and for the other part of the time a butterfly. And what we have to introduce here, of course, is a new property that subsumes the two phases to one common entity, which are the so-called Lepidopterans. So these are Lepidopterans, which are in the first part of their existence. They might be a caterpillar and then later on they become a butterfly. So what we do here is we introduce a new class, Lepidopteran, which subsumes both phases of that class, which are first a caterpillar, later on a butterfly. And they are um, a subclass of animal. As, as you see here, of course, this is then uh, a property or a class which is rigid because if the Lepidopteran ceases to exist, it's also not an animal anymore, then it's gone. Okay, this is the case of the so-called phased sortals. And it's quite similar for the country. So you see here we have the country and the country has been part of uh, or has been subclass of two different superclasses. So what we have here, um, country might be considered a geographical entity, then it's related somehow to location, or it might be considered a societal entity. And both of these things, of course, have different characteristics. And I already mentioned that when I've introduced that. So while a country might change, for example, its geographic region in the course of time, the point is the geographic region, region does not cease to exist when the country as being a state, as being a social entity, might be dissolved. So of course, this might cause contradictions. So as you see here, the societal entity might stay the same while the geographical region changes over time. So this is one of the points which has to be considered here. So what you do here again is okay. Um, consider country okay as location, but don't uh, introduce another class which is not referring to the societal entity. So just introduce for location something like a geographical region. 
to separate the two meanings that want to be expressed or that are expressed here in that ontology. So we have first the geographical region, which is like for example considered Germany, and we have a societal entity which is considered as being the German state, so also Germany. And then we can separate it, and both of them are rigid properties. So the point is, in the end, um, you see here country as being a societal entity. If the country ceases to exist, it's not a societal entity anymore, so it's gone. But a geographical region for itself, it's also rigid then, because if the geographical region ceases to exist, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore, so the entity is gone. And this would be then the correct representation according to the interpretation I'm giving you now. Of course, you might have another, a different interpretation, and then of course you will end up with a different ontology. Besides these phased sortals, there are also roles to consider. So what are roles? Roles are properties that characterize the way something participates to a contingent event or states of affairs. So roles usually do not supply own identity criteriums. So let's have a look at that one. So we had here entity and um, we had animals as living beings, but also animals as agents. And we had social entity, which could be an entity, but which could also be something like an agent. And here you see also that we have, of course, here uh, agent as being something like anti-rigid and then we have animal and entity who are rigid and this is also something which is usually not allowed so here again you have a rule violation anti-rigid cannot subsume rigidity and the point here is um, if you want somehow to um, uh, incorporate the knowledge that a person or an animal or anything else can also be considered an agent this should not be the same class or in the same taxonomy as it is considered a living being, so where this rigidity really holds, because otherwise you will end up in trouble because of the interpretation of that. So therefore, it would fit best in your taxonomy, which tries here to stay or to focus on rigid subclasses um, to remove exactly also the taxonomic links to animal and to societal entities. So you see it here as dashed lines, they have to be removed. Okay, and the same we have here, for example, not only for the agent, but also for the legion, a, a legal agent, which is a subclass of uh, the agent. And you see here again, the legal agent is anti-rigid, while the subclasses of uh, legal agent, agent here, person, country, and organization, they are considered rigid. And again, person is here, viewed under two different meanings. So person as being a vertebrate or person as being a legal agent. So these are two different things. So therefore you should definitely remove um, the, the taxonomic link which violates here exactly the axiom that we have already uh, that we have already talked about. So again the dashed lines are the axioms that are violations against our constraints and therefore we will delete them. Also to make clear to uh, make the taxonomy according to its meaning unique. So this is one of the points you have to consider here. Okay, what else do we have here? We have another rule violation. We have foot here and we see here foot is anti-rigid and nevertheless apple is part of uh, foot and apple also is part of fruit. And also, maybe you cannot eat the apple anymore uh, if, uh, if it rots, it's still a fruit. So the point is again here, we have a violation between anti-rigidity and uh, rigidity, and therefore this taxonomic link will be removed. Again here, the dashed line will be removed. Okay, and besides phased sortals and roles, there, there is a third thing that has to be considered. So usually you have to look for so-called attributions. Attributions, this is something like our class with all the red things that are collected there. They should not necessarily be represented 
completely or explicitly in a general taxonomy. So the proper way to do this usually is um, if I want to represent an attribution, I do it simply via using an attribute like color, for example, and then I can somehow subsume anything which has the color red. So this would be one of the solutions. However, it's only said they should not necessarily be used because they can be part, uh, they, they, there can be violations or there can be mismatches, misinterpretations. Sometimes they are quite handy, like it's stated here. So there are occasions, there are applications when you need something like that. Okay, so therefore we keep it here in our cleaned ontology. You see we have still red and red of course is then a super class of red apple. But of course you should think of you really need concerning your application this class and then probably you should get rid of it inside that taxonomy for example. And this then would be the cleaned up taxonomy from our original example. So look it up and of course I see it's really difficult to assign these meta properties and to discuss these meta properties. Um, but if you use it, you will see that during the discussion of these meta properties, you will already during the discussion, you will see that there are, for example, between two uh, suborderings, like for example, between a superclass and a subclass, there might be mismatches, especially if, for example, a subclass has two superclasses, which combines two different meanings. And you can more likely also see the difference between rigid classes and also anti-rigid classes, which are nothing else but a role or a phase or something like that. So these are often uh, inconsistencies and, and failures and errors that are made during ontology construction. And they, of course, can here be filtered out with the help of this ontoclean methodology. If you are interested in further use of that ontology, I have here a few links for you in Art with Articles where the use of ontoclean is described. And if you are using, for example, the protege um, ontology editor that we have talked about, there are older versions, not version 5. If you consider a, a 3.x or 4.x version, there are also plugins for ontoclean, for example, available to test it out. Okay, so this was all for ontological engineering. So we made it the entire lecture five plus the extra parts. In the next lecture, lecture number six, we will talk about knowledge engineering and I will give you a nice introduction into linked data, linked data engineering and what you can do with all the semantic web technologies that we have talked about so far.